was a time of ancient lore when we huddled by the fire in animal skins like one great choir of a millennial conversation to each a true desire we sipped leaf wine and made a light till fire opals gave us sight salamanders writhing in the blaze as fire snakes lazy ribbons gaze a dream within a dream a sight so grand more beautiful than death or night's own command was something in our past so deep though knowledge we had tried to keep the secrets etched on ancient walls spoken down the ages halls we'd grown complacent blind and numb the truth obscured no longer to come or maybe nothing just a dream of minds that thought they were supreme the drawings on the cave walls were no more than a child's doodles nothing to explore I was entombed and mother said with a sigh the vultures can't pick you my sweetest of pies my love for you is so deep I won't leave you in this heap I'm here to clean the spaces of gold rings and bare knuckles fear not the worms for in death we remain vermivorous fear not your languid spine I'm here to make us both entwine will be scarabs entwined in this tomb side by side till the end of time
The fisher lives a quiet life, away from village strife. On the shore of the sea he does dwell, in a simple hut he built himself. His skin is brown from the sun, his clothes are nearly done. His hair and beard are long and unkempt, as if never cut or combed once in his life. He spends his days fishing away, casting his line in the bay. He's a man of solitude and peace, living in nature's embrace. The fisher never took a wife and had no kids. No one knew from whence he'd come. The villagers thought him quite eccentric, for he'd never eat the fish he'd caught, but trade them for the simple goods of life, no matter the weather, day or night. I once saw him pick a grasshopper from a reed. He held it gently in his hand like a precious seed. Dabbed it with a bit of honey wild he'd gathered and ate it whole, not a single thing he'd squandered. The fisher had a plan that he would not depart, to catch each fish individually by its own art. My father said to him, take a basket of this sort, to travel with the fish and keep them in a single retort. But the fisher stayed his course and said with a smile, I must carry my catch altogether, mile by mile. My father then offered a net for his catch to be strong, but the fisher would not take it. He said nothing was wrong. The fisher had a purpose that he would not alter. He collected his fish, each one unique and a falter. I sat and watched the fisher quite still, his eyes on the skies without a thrill. He asked me why I had no shoes. I asked him why he had no two. He said he had no need to wear. I thought it odd, I must be fair. But something told me he was wise. For shoes or not, he'd seen the skies. half mad, so they say, who runs with wild abandon each day. Though his feet are sore and his soles are bare, he does not wish for shoes to wear. He likes to feel the earth beneath, to feel each moment in life to breathe. Though it's hard and rough, it's something dear, for that is why he chooses to go without shoes here.
Though the world may say I'm mad for caring more than I have heard, I say it's truer madness still to collect more than we need to fill the void of life's emptiness, for in the end it's us who are possessed. Riddle me this of what I speak, a tale of a king and a fish so meek. The king with his wealth had no peace of mind, the fish without it could still be kind. The moral of this I'm sure you can see, it's not the things that you possess that set you free. A king, who hoarded all he saw, was master of the things he'd store. He gathered riches, yet his need increasingly he'd want for more. His every whim was met, though his kingdom sadly fell. The more he gained, the more he'd jealously hoard. His wife and son neglected, he'd pile up his wealth in a chamber, sealed away by a key. A son so young and filled with glee, found the key to set him free from the chamber of his dad, the door he opened delighted and glad. The king ran to the treasure room with a fearful crash, but sadly his son lay beneath the gold in a deadly mash. He dug with might and main, but his efforts were in vain, for his only son was now lost, and his love too late he did gain. He had collected things of wealth, but the only thing that mattered was gone, and the king in grief and sorrow wept for what he had done. The king once had riches, a fortune to behold, 
But now he's grown wise and his treasures he sold. He gave away all that was his to the poor. And he set out alone to live without more. Was this mad fisher once a king? I found it hard to believe. But he said, Lula, wisdom comes at a cost and it's not easy to retrieve. He had a saying to share, it's wisdom the owl does bring. The wings of knowledge only stretch at twilight's ring. Rain, rain came down today, a lesson to learn, that much I say, the time to change I can't deny, but only if I choose to try. Hope is seen in the darkest skies, a chance to change our destiny lies, a rumble of thunder, a sudden surprise, reminds me of hope and its sweet surprise. The fisher looked up at the sky with a smile. His wild eyes spoke wisdom, and I saw it too. He said, Lula, seek the middle way between all and nothing, and you'll find it today. It's a secret place deep in your mind, where the genie you'll find if you search and you're kind. The greatest secret of all is that there's no big mystery. When you find the genie, You'll even know the God's history. A madman spoke of a genie, it made no sense to me, that there was a secret of no secret at all, but I listened to his call. He said he'd been told by a wizard in a dream to search for a genie, or so it did seem. Was it a dream or was it real? I can no longer tell. Are we all in a dream? Is a godly being real? I'm starting to feel confused beyond belief. I can only hope the genie is true, and the madman's words will ring true.
The summit beckons me to come and go. I ponder if my mother faced this way. Did she march against the wind and snow, forsaking all that held her back, she'd stay. No matter what I hear the wind, I'm sure your singing carries me away. You sing the rain, you sing the snow, and I can brave the elements today. Beauty so fair, my heart so aware of a love that I feel so close and sincere. Your eyes like the snow, so pure and serene. My love for you grows, tis ever so keen. Your face like a rose, so delicate and pale. Your charm so profound, I can scarce exhale. Your lips like the mist, so soft and divine. My eyes forever yours. My soul so entwined. Your touch like a spark, so warm and alive. Your presence so strong, desire I revive. Your voice like a harp, so sweet and melodic. My heart so enchanted and so, so romantic. The chill of winter comes so strong, it brings the pale promise of hope so long. Though summer's end may seem so wrong, it's a sign of new life to come along. Though the green of summer's quickly gone, we'll brave the cold and stay strong. Though spring will bring no promise of return, we'll remember the warmth in our hearts to learn. Though summer may have sworn no reprieve, we'll still sing trusting in what we believe.
We may come to regret that we bemoaned the florid heat of summer now flown. As the new grass lights the air with a gleam, we hear the promise of spring in the stream. Winter groans in sheets of ice and snow, our mittened hands cupped against the cold. We sing of life, of hope that will grow, and meadow birds join in our song of old.